Hi, all right, so last video, topic 12. Uh, it's pretty obvious, I think, where I am. I'm in Memphis, right there, Memphis, Memphis. I'm in Memphis, um, Spiel Street in Memphis. Um, most of you probably know I lived there um, for five years before I moved to LA uh, a couple years ago. Um, so good memories, good times. Just went back over spring break and it was awesome. Um, all right, so, um, <laughs> In this uh, last video, we're going through the example uh, for price discrimination. So hopefully you've worked through this on your own. Um, maybe you have questions. Um, we're gonna do it here together. Um, I also posted the uh, answers on, on Brightspace in case you wanna just check your answers there. All right, so um, here we have the same type of problem that we looked at in the last video. Um, table problem, we've got, um, a lot of different people here. Each person is only interested in buying one unit of the product. And we've got information about the costs of production. Um, and what we wanna do is answer some questions about what's gonna happen if this market is competitive. In other words, what's a socially optimal outcome? What happens if this market is a single price monopoly? And what happens if we have price discrimination? So um, we can see the first part here is asking for the socially optimal quantity. Remember that's like competition where price is equal to marginal cost. Um, one way to think about that is that like from the perspective of society, we only wanna produce something if someone values it more than the cost of production. So as long as someone values this sneak uh, more than $24, then we're gonna keep producing. And that stops being true here, right after Frida Kahlo. So we've got a quantity of six snakes that we're gonna sell in this market if it's competitive. Um, and that's also the socially optimal quantity. All right. So the next question is, what is a single price monopoly equilibrium? Now what we wanna do is treat everyone as a big group. We can only charge one price, so we have one group of consumers and we're gonna calculate total revenue and marginal revenue for everyone all together. So total revenue, remember, is price times quantity. So I've got 50, 90, 120, that's 140, 150, 150, and 140. Great. And then marginal revenue, that's my change in total revenue over change in quantity, but really we're just looking here at change in total revenue because each row of the table represents an increase in quantity of one. So the denominator is just one and we're just looking at the change in total revenue. So the first unit I sell gives me $50. The second one increases my revenue by 40 the third one by 30, then we've got 20, 10, zero, and negative 10 for the last one. All right, so I'm just taking the difference here in total revenue to get my marginal revenue, and now I can answer the question. How many, uh, uh, how much, what's the market equilibrium price and quantity for the single price monopoly? So again, I wanna compare my marginal revenue to marginal cost. So I'm gonna compare that marginal revenue I just calculated to this $24 marginal cost, which is given in the problem. And I can see that I'm going to sell just three cake, uh, cakes, snakes, three snakes, and I'm going to charge a price of $40. Now we wanna know also how much profit we're gonna earn. That's gonna to be total revenue minus, now I have to calculate total cost. It costs $24 to raise each snake, and then we also have a fixed cost of $10. So altogether, that's gonna be $24 times three snakes plus my $10 fixed cost. So profit will equal $38 for the single price monopoly. All right, the next question is now, assume that consumers D 
F and G are students and A, B, and C are not students. So we're gonna split the market here. So we have students down here. They're not willing to pay as much as the non-students. And um, we're gonna do the same thing that we just did, comparing marginal revenue and marginal cost, but now just separately for each of these two groups. Remember that the first group, the non-students on the top there, we've already calculated their marginal revenue, so we don't need to do any additional calculations. The quantity for the non-students will equal three and the price will equal 40. I just need to figure out how much I'm gonna sell to the students and what kind of discount I'm gonna give them. So to do that, we're gonna renumber them person one, two, three, and four within their group, and then recalculate total revenue and marginal revenue just for the students. So here I've got one times 35, two times 30, that's 75, and that's 80. So my marginal revenue will be 35 and then 25, 15 and five. All right, so now we've done all of our calculations and we can see comparing our um, marginal revenue to our marginal cost that in this case we would sell two snakes to the students at a, at a price of uh, $30. And we'll calculate profit just the same way we did before, but now since we have two groups, we just need to kind of add together their total revenue. All right, I sell three snakes at a price of $40 and two snakes at a price of $30. And then for my, oops, that's not a plus. I don't know why I keep doing that. Um, add up cost of $24 per snake. I'm producing a total of five snakes, and then my fixed cost is $10. All right, so plug that all into your calculator and you're gonna get profit of $50. All right, and then the last question is, how many snakes will the firm sell if it can perfectly price discriminate? Calculate profit for perfect price discrimination. All right, so the first part is pretty easy because we already answered this question. The firm here is gonna sell as long as the consumer reservation price is greater than or equal to marginal cost, which is the same condition we use to find the socially optimal quantity, right? These will always be the same. Um, so we get here a quantity of six does not make sense to sell a snake to Georgia O'Keeffe because Georgia O'Keeffe is not willing to pay $24. Georgia O'Keeffe is only willing to pay $20, but it costs us $24 to grow a snake. And so um, there's no world in which it would be profitable to sell a snake to Georgia O'Keeffe. You can quote me on that. Okay. All right. So, um, our profit here is gonna be equal to, now we have to add up all of the reservation prices for our consumers here. So we've got uh, 50 plus 45 plus 40 plus 35 plus 30 plus 25. Don't add that 20 on there. We're not selling it to Georgia O'Keeffe, okay? Um, and then uh, we've got our total cost is gonna be 24 times six plus 10. Perfect. That gives us a total profit of $71, which of course is the highest profit that the firm could possibly make because they are charging everybody exactly the most that they're willing to pay um, and selling the highest quantity that they can possibly sell. So. Um, the firm here earns the highest profit, $71. Profits will be a little bit lower in imperfect price discrimination, lower in 
lower still um, in single price monopoly. And of course the lowest profits would be in competition. All right, so I've summarized a comparison of these different markets down here for you so you can just try to conceptually organize your thoughts around which types of markets earn the most profit, which types of markets um, have the most surplus or the most deadweight loss, okay? So um, perfect price discrimination has the most profit, um, then imperfect, then single price, we just saw that in the problem, then competition at the bottom. In terms of surplus, the way you can see that um, in this problem is by looking at the quantity. Remember that deadweight loss always comes from this restriction in trade, a decrease in the quantity that's being exchanged on the market. So the most deadweight loss in this case is gonna come in single price monopoly. Um, the least deadweight loss or the most efficient outcome would be perfect price discrimination or competition, right? Those are equally uh, efficient. They both have uh, zero deadweight loss. And then we have the most deadweight loss with single price monopoly. All right, so hopefully that summary is helpful. Um, if you have questions, please post them on the discussion board, send me an email, come to my office hours, um, and I'll see you in the next video for the start of topic 13.